Oh, that's hot. That's hot. Little hot take, but uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the first Black Panther movie. I know I'm in the minority when I say this, but I just think that movie isn't the masterpiece everyone says it is. And with the unfortunate passing of Chadwick Boseman, I was very worried about how the next film was going to do. They weren't going to recast him, and I'm personally glad they didn't. I love Ryan Coogler as a director and writer, but I was very concerned about how they are going to handle this movie with the absence of the king himself. How are they going to address losing the iconic man who portrayed T'Challa in a convincing way? Well, I'm glad to say that this movie found a way to do it. Wakanda Forever was able to honor the memory of Mr. Bozeman while also telling a phenomenal story. I was amazed by this movie and I could not have asked for more. Also, thank God Phase 4 is finally over, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Firstly, I think it's important to address how the film handles T'Challa. As I said before, I did not think recasting him would have been the best choice. I personally think that when an actor passes away, their character must be removed somehow. As much as it is a tragedy and recasting would probably make the whole universe go a lot smoother, I just think it's weird to do so. It would have also just been really distracting because everyone would just be focused on trying to compare Chadwick Boseman's performance to whoever they recasted him with. And that's something this film didn't need. And I'm glad we didn't get weird footage reuse like they did with Carrie Fisher. I am relieved that Disney decided to let T'Challa be removed from the story and not recast him. If only they would treat William Hurt the same. The way T'Challa passed was so heartbreaking and the silence of the theater really invoked that. The fact the whole movie is about his loss and honoring his memory is what makes this movie so special. The end credits scene was... Interesting, and spoilers for it obviously. Seeing that T'Challa had a son the whole time was really surprising. I mean, it was done a hell of a whole lot better than this. It is technically how they're gonna replace the old T'Challa since they share the same name, but I think it works with the story and having a son was probably what they're gonna do in the future regardless. I just hope this doesn't mean we're immediately going to get him as the next Black Panther. We better stay with Shuri for a long ass time before we get T'Challa Jr. Speaking of Shuri, man. Her journey in this movie was a spectacle. Seeing her lose everyone she loves and using that to carry her forward was as triumphant as you can get. I loved her arc of trying to actually acknowledge the fact that her brother is gone. Most stories about grief usually have the main character trying to move on from the ones they loved, but not this movie. Shuri is trying too hard to move on to the point where she almost ignores the fact that Chala has passed away. Her growth of learning to sit down and remember him nearly brought me to tears. You feel every single emotion from her and that's thanks to her award-winning performance by Leticia Wright. Everyone in this movie did good. Angela Bassett also deserves an award as Queen Ramonda, but for me personally, Namor stole the show. Tina Cuerta did a fantastic job portraying Namor to the point where I kind of fell in love with him. I mean, can you blame me? Did you hear the way he said Namor? Well, my enemies call me Namor. You finna make me act up, man. He's by far one of, if not the best villain of Phase 4. He isn't a cartoon villain. He doesn't have an out of place motivation. He's just the leader of his people and is trying to protect them. I absolutely commend Ren Kukler for taking a character with such a stupid and silly design and making him a badass ruler. But oh my god, how can I not mention Michael B. Jordan returning as Killmonger? What a cameo! The fact he stayed a bad guy made me so happy. He just comes back to tell Shuri not to be a pussy, and oh my god, that is the hardest thing you could do. Even in death, he's still amazing. I am really glad that Ryan Coogler decided to continue his streak of keeping Michael B. Jordan in every film he's ever made. The story is an emotional roller coaster. From start to finish, the film just gets more and more intense and sad. The tone is really good in this film, for the most part. Ludwig Gorenson returns to do the music, and it's amazing as you would expect. When that Black Panther theme kicked in, I felt nothing but overwhelming joy. The film does have issues, however, which kind of take a toll on the movie for me, but only a bit. For one, the film, despite being a very unique one, can't escape the fact that it's a Marvel movie. It has a lot of the same issues that every Marvel movie has. The comedy was kind of bad. <laughs> there are a few good jokes, but honestly, I could have went without humor in this movie, or at least not to Marvel degree. Some jokes actually ruin certain scenes, like when Shuri first takes the herb and comes back after that conversation with Killmonger. Like, did we really need two jokes back to back after that? The other issue is the required interconnectivity of the Marvel Universe. 
aka the involvement of Madame Hydra. This character did not need to be in the movie. The subplot with Ross is honestly the weakest part of this movie, and having her in it just felt really, really manufactured. That you can honestly just tell that these scenes were a Marvel demand, not something Ryan Coogler actually wanted to put in the movie. The CGI in that last battle looked kinda in some parts. The suit is pretty good, but I honestly can't love it because it's CGI for most of the time. Some scenes I felt like could have been longer, like really simmer in the emotion they're trying to portray. And there's a lot of those scenes in the movie. When Shuri's talking to her mother from the spiritual plane, when she reveals herself to be the new Black Panther, when Namor and Shuri decide to end the battle, it just feels very rushed. Which is weird because the movie is pretty long. It's nearly three hours and it feels like three hours. I think the main issue is that there are a lot of unnecessary scenes, like the Agent Ross scenes, which take priority over scenes that actually needed to be longer. That kind of takes a toll on the pacing of the film. The lighting is also really bad. I don't know if it was just the theater I went to, but any scene that took place in the dark, you couldn't see shit. And there's a lot of scenes in the dark. There's scenes at night, in a dark warehouse, underwater, in a cave. They're all so poorly lit. So yeah, there's just a bunch of pretty small problems, but they're all stacked on top of each other and it kind of takes a toll on the rest of the movie. Overall though, this was a beautiful movie. It looks beautiful in the daytime. It's a heartbreaking story about love, loss, grief, revenge, and triumph. I'm so glad Phase 4 is able to end on such a banger. What a movie, and what a way to honor the Black Panther. I give this movie a 9 out of 10.